my friends from Wa, from Wa, all my files are called Wa. From Wa's audio, they make pedals that go. Then they make pedals that go. They make pedals that go. They make pedals that go. That's a fuzz. Then they make pedals that go. That's, I like those. You know, where you have more notes than you had before. Then they make pedals that go. Then you make pedals that go loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. Soft. They do that. They make pedals that put your shit in a room or a cavern. Then they make the cool slurry thing that makes your pedal sound like you sound like as if it's in space. They make many things that make your guitar sound different than it sounded before. Now they make a pedal that makes no sound at all. They also make a pedal that doesn't even have a power input. I call this passive. It's a feature, but apparently, I don't understand. It, I don't understand how it works because it make it doesn't need power. It also doesn't have a sound of its own, and that's really what you're paying for. And I'm very confused about these kind of things because why am I paying for something that doesn't do anything? But you don't want it to do anything. The more you pay, the less it does anything. We're talking about <laughs> Leslie's taking a sweet ass time to switch to the pedals, the canvas, which is a DI box, and the canvas as a DI box to me is pretty useless. In the fact that what I would want to go into my recording situation, I put on the desk and I then plug it into my recording situation, i.e. interface. So let me illustrate. Here's my ACS-1, which I use heavily, especially for stereo things. And it's got unbalanced outputs. Okay. And I take an unbalanced High end in this case, SIS evidence audio solderless patch cable. Plug it in right here and go in the back here. And I go right into this audio interface, which is about 40 centimeters away from it. So I don't need something that allows my unbalanced signal to travel distances because my distance is 40 centimeter and with a good patch cable, I'm not losing anything. I'm going straight into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin or my X4, depending on which one I've got there. And I'm going line in, not mic, because this is not an XLR plug. Now, if you're in a situation where let's say you're playing with your band in a studio, you are in the studio space, you're playing live in the studio, and you need to travel from where your pedal board is and you have a DI solution like the ACS-1 or actually the Iridium, which I think is also not balanced. I tried to find out. Or a variety of other unbalanced sources. It could be a keyboard, which is traditionally not balanced and you need a DI box. Um, anything that requires long cable travel and where the source is unbalanced, meaning two little wires instead of three wires. I don't, I don't, I don't know about impedances and stuff. So in a studio situation, you would want to go into the wall or the stage box and you'd best convert your signal to a balanced signal, a microphone signal. You would need a good DI box. In a live situation, you would have your pedal board on the ground or uh, your keyboard rack or whatever, and you want to go to the stage box, which then has a very long cable travel. The stage box is nothing but just an extension cable, just a very long one, to the front of house. Well, you would also need a DI box to convert your unbalanced signal into a balanced signal so you can go to the freaking front of house and have a good signal without any interference because the balancedtitude of the balanced signal, something about phase reversal of the one to the other and then interference doesn't have a chance and shit like this. You can run longer cables with balanced. 
signals. So running a guitar cable from your modeler, keyboard, whatever, acoustic guitar, for example, to the front of house would be a bad idea unless front of house is three meters away, which would be nine feet. Anything else needs a DI box. And that's what the canvas does. There's a mono version and there's a stereo version, which I have on the table here. You can buy DI boxes from Behringer for 29 bucks. You can buy, you can buy DI boxes from Telefunken for 500 bucks, which on the surface all do the same thing. But component quality is a big thing from these boxes. I'm going to tell you straight away that the canvas is not one of the cheap ones. It actually clocks in in between my stereo version, in between two of the radials. So radial has a stereo DI box for 199 euro with exactly the same features. This is 280 in stereo. It's less in mono. Um, radial also has a DI box exactly the same features in stereo for 380 but then it's got Jensen transformers so depending on the components you can definitely pay more money how good are the components in this versus the Jensen transformer radial I do not know why would you even ask that I don't have that thing here I can't a b them would we hear a difference I do not know You can buy the Telefunken for 500 bucks if that tickles your fancy. Okay? Walrus Audio, all I can say is company with good craftsmanship, made in the US, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to put shit in it. And then the question is, does the thing work? An A-B test, measuring things with oscilloscopes in that DI box versus that DI box, there are better channels than mine to do this uh, kind of video. Uh, Colin Scott should do a 10 DI box shootout and talk about impedances. My friend Max Solo in Berlin is doing exactly those types of videos where he measures every little thing, but then of course he's got to get his hands on 10 DI boxes and who wants to do that video? Not me! So all I can say is, so let's see right now, is writing people on Facebook. Because I'm getting I'm getting the message that Leslie's writing people on Facebook about Henning's getting Indian food, you want some. While she's supposed to freaking be switching up there. There's nothing to switch, you're just gabbing. I'm not just gabbing, I'm talking about the eye boxes. Get off your phone, woman! So, all I can say is, it's not the cheapest one, but I'm pretty sure it's good. What do I know? So I did a test, uh, but first let's let's look at some features of the canvas. My version is stereo. So let me first tell you, um, it has a uh, DI mode in which it's converting a high impedance signal, so literally an electric guitar or whatever, very, very tiny signal, um, to a balanced signal. And... Uh, The signal will be reduced by 20 dB or if you engage the pad, 35 dB and then comes out XLR and you crank it back up on the mixer. Or you're going to the LI mode, which is the line isolator mode, which is made for modelers and stuff like this. Now, not all modelers. Right now, I've got the ACS one right here. And of course, you do this in the front, but I'll show you in, in, in a sec. If you have a Helix that's got XLR out, you don't need a DI box. If got if you got a uh, Stomp XL, you don't need a DI box. I'm not sure about the Pod Go. That might be unbalanced. So make sure, if you want to get a DI box, that you actually need it. An unbalanced signal converted to balance, which means keyboards and something like a modeler, uh, acoustic guitar preamp, which actually realistically most of the time have an XLR out. So you don't need a DI box. Also, if you are on a certain level, you just tell your front of house guy, by the way, I need the DI box, bam, and they're hopefully going to bring you a good DI box. Then you also don't need a DI box. But if you want to be the guy that is in control of his own DI box, get the freaking canvas, put it on your board, because the cool thing is, as you can see right here, it is pedal shaped. And it just is nice and small, fits on your board, you know, all 
top loaded, but then right here on the left, we have the X, oops, the XLR out. So it is definitely nice to go as the last thing on your board. And then you tell your front of house guy, oh, by the way, I just need two XLRs and bam, you're good to go. And they will love you because they don't have to fucking drag over the eye boxes. So, War is audio freaking quality. It's passive, doesn't need power. So some of the iBoxes need power. You can power them either with 9 volt or you can power them with a battery or you can power them with phantom power. This is a passive DI. So compare it to other passive DIs in stereo. Again, there's a mono version. So you go in up here, left and right, and then you can go through if you're going to an amp or to uh, your headphone mixer, if your keyboard, whatever, you can grab the sig you grab the signal, go to wherever you want to go. If you want to sum it to mono, you click that and it's summed to mono. And then you've got your XLR out right there. And you go to the front of house, very likely through very long cables or a stage box. On the bottom right here, we have the switch between DI and line isolator, the pad that goes from minus 20 to minus 35, and the ground lift if you have some hum or hiss or buzz problems. That's it. Super simple. Now, how do we test this? Obviously, we run a fucking long cable. So I went over to Leslie's house, <laughs> chained together as many XLR cables as I could find, plugged the ACS-1 into the canvas, ran it into my studio, and saw if anything would arrive here with any interference and hey, bum and hiss and hiss and hum and bum and also cars driving over the cable on the street all the time. So let's check that out. So that was my test. It works. Now, if I plugged in the ACS-1 directly without the super long cable and the canvas in between, would it sound different? You know what? It might. Might have a tiny, tiny bit more high end, but I had zero hum, zero buzz, no side effects, not anything. If I'm losing the tiniest bit of high end and I didn't even really notice that, uh, maybe on your ACS-1 or whatever you're using, give it a little bit more high end to begin with. Maybe on your mixer, do that. 
So if there is signal loss, I couldn't detect any. Don't think there was. But we're also talking about a life situation, people. That detail, if it gets lost, which I don't think it does, really, please stop crying about that. Come on, be realistic. So my argument is for this and for spending more money, whether it is this one or a radial or telephone or whatever you want to spend your money on. Uh, by the way, this is a paid for video. So sorry, Rolls Audio, that I'm talking about other brands, but you know, it's what we do here. Um, my argument for a high quality, more expensive DI box is you already spent the money on the board and you people know who you are. Your boards are five, six, seven thousand freaking bucks with the power supplies and the board and the high end patch cables and all the freaking pedals you have on there. I see your boards, people. You can't hide them from me. So why would you throw a Behringer DI box at the end of the chain? Wouldn't you want to make sure you got a good one? So drop the extra cash. Whether it's on this or something else, fine. But again, WA, we like them. Cool people. They actually, they actually sent me a, a picture. That was my box. That's my box that was sent to me. Henning, paint up. Squiggly, squiggly, whatever that name is. And it says on the, on the back, don't put in mouth. You're not the boss of me, Walrus Audio. I put in my mouth what I want to put in my mouth. I love you guys. You're awesome. So, canvas. Video done. This was way too long for the iBox. Like, ridiculously way too long video. I can't even believe I'm still here. Links below. Use them to support the channel. And animals at the end.